Hello everybody, we're in downtown Oakland. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. And we're here at the Healthcare for All demonstration for Medicare to expand Medicare to cover everybody here in the United States. Celebration of the 50th birthday. And it's the 50th birthday of Medicare. So we're happy that you're joining us. We're going to be a little shakier than normal today because I uh, broke the clip for my uh, monopod and didn't bring it back up like an idiot. Anyway, got lots of lovely people out here today. That's the demo. We got lots of people. That was Steve Rhodes, a photographer. Uh, you can follow him at tigerbeat.com or at tigerbeat on Twitter, excuse me. So we got lots of lovely people out here today. Well, you have to forgive me, people, because I don't have my monopod today, so if it's a little shakier than normal. And we got people that came in from all over Northern California to be here at the demo. So we're going to have some speakers here. Uh, the demo is a little late getting started, unfortunately. As you can see, there's no speakers up here. That's why our live stream is a little bit late. So hopefully uh, we'll have some more people coming out to speak. But as it is, we've got a real crowd. I guess there's, uh, there's a good 300, maybe 400 people here. Here we're out here celebrating the 50th anniversary of Medicare is a federal program, one of the most successful government programs in American history, and that's why we're out here. So I think they're having a little problem with the sound system, which is why uh, we haven't begun yet. See a few familiar faces out here today. And please forgive me, I don't have my clip today for my monopod. I had a cheapie and it broke. So be a little shakier than normal, unfortunately. So we're here with your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan, here in downtown Oakland, California, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Medicare, one of the most successful programs in American history. And we're out here, uh, the uh, focus of our demonstration today is to expand Medicare so it covers everybody, so we can have universal health care 
in the united states one of the richest countries in the world and we don't we don't properly we don't have proper medical care for most of the people here in this country which is a really sad statement on our society so please forgive the shaky camera as uh, my clip clip broke on my uh, monopod which I like the back of my mind I was gonna bring my other clip but like a doofus I left it at home If you guys give me a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't get this thing to work. Yeah. Just hang on, folks. Yeah, it's warm out here, isn't it? Okay, we're going to jury rig it here on top of the, the monopod, so it's a little stabler. There you go, folks. So glad you could join us, new viewers. This is Freeman Sullivan, and we're out here at the uh, Oscar Grand Plaza here in downtown Oakland, right in front of City Hall, for the uh, Medicare for All demonstration, healthcare, universal health care. Uh, for people here in the United States, so everybody's covered. So when you walk into the doctor's office or the clinic, you'll be able to receive adequate health care. Got a nice crowd out here today. It looks like there's maybe a thousand people out here so far. I'm glad you could join us. Uh, if you have any questions, log on to the chat, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. You can see, got a pretty good crowd. Anyway, we should have some speakers starting up in just a few minutes. Um, I was uh, watching a little bit earlier, and there was, um, looked like they were having some technical difficulties with the sound system. Oh, no, I've got enough to hold with the camera, but thank you, dear. You look like you could use some sunglasses. For sure. I can't take photos of sunglasses on. Oh. But I can't. It's so dark. Oh, okay. Can't see the viewfinder. Oh, yeah, we should be getting started here 
in just a few minutes. So uh, ask for your patience. And remember, see your live stream at Freeman Sullivan. Got anything you'd like to ask me? Any questions about what today's demonstration is about? Or if you'd like to contact me in the future, uh, you can log on to the chat. Or you can follow me on Twitter, at Freeman Sullivan, or on Facebook. Uh, my name is Clark Sullivan. So you can do the one or the other. Glad that you're watching. Got a good crowd, maybe a thousand people here today, and we're waiting for the speakers, which is why the hell aren't they starting? Beautiful day here in Oakland today, 70 degrees, sunny. And uh, hopefully, we'll be started here in just a couple of minutes. Typical lefty demonstration. Have everybody show up at 11 o'clock and don't get started until 12. Lots of unions here. So there's a march scheduled uh, for this demonstration too, right after uh, the speakers, I would assume. That's at least the information that I received. So that's a couple of blocks to be going to the federal building. Yeah. So we will have some politicos out here speaking. And um, hopefully we can uh, make them keep their campaign or their promises that they make. day celebrating the 50th anniversary of Medicare, uh, signed into law by President L uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson in 1965, part of his Great Society program, uh, which was really the last time that we had any really new federal programs that were worth a shit, in my humble opinion. And So again, we should be getting started in just a few minutes for those of you just joining us. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Up here we go. Somebody's finally stepping up to the to the mic. A lot of union people here. A lot of people bust in from all over Northern California. Uh, it's this good crowd of at least a thousand people. And we will get we will be getting started in just a minute. So uh, please be patient. Uh, now we got a second sound system coming out, so that's probably what the problem is and why they haven't gotten started yet. Questions or any anything they'd like to know about today's demonstration, uh, you can log on to the chat. I would appreciate it if you did, and left a short statement. Uh, the hashtag for this event could be Healthcare for All or Medicare 50 or Medicare for All with the number four uh, or Universal Healthcare. So uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd log on to the chat and and uh, tweet me out there. Always could use more people watching, of course. And thanks for joining me. I plan on being out tomorrow I, uh, uh, to another demonstration. So we're trying to get out here. I'm trying to get out here on a more frequent basis. Um, you can also follow me at Freeman Sullivan. And I am on Facebook. Uh, it's Clark Sullivan.
Oh, thank you, UK Watching. Crusoe Girl, thanks a lot for joining us. All right. Oh, good, we're on Occupy London. Okay, good. All right, we have health cares. Uh, uh, UK Watching says, uh, we're having health care issues here and now, and the Tories want us to have an American-style system. Well, I got to tell you that the system that you have currently in England is much better than the health care system that we have here in the United States, especially if you're a poor person or you don't have insurance. Well, there is no insurance in England, I, I would imagine. Uh, I'd like to know more about what's going on with UK and their health system. And I got to tell you, you do not want an American-style health care system. It's broken here. It doesn't work. It's overly expensive, and basically it's a little uh, scam, uh, troika of the insurance companies, uh, the AMA, American Medical Association, and uh, the federal government. So they've, they've, and their state and local governments have basically all decided that, uh, you know, they want to they want to charge as much as they possibly can. I mean, when you get charged $200 for a couple of aspirin, right, which you can go over to Walgreens and buy a bottle of 100 for 99 cents, uh, that would say something that our health care system is in deep trouble. So, uh, yeah, no, we do not we do not want an American-style health care system in, in the United Kingdom. That's for damn sure. Uh, we should get it started here in just a few minutes. I don't know why there's a holdup on today's demonstration. I guess either they got that. It looks like they got the sound system sorted out. Uh, I think they're waiting for more people to show up. But as you can see, We've already got a pretty good crowd here, so I can't really tell you what the holdup is. Uh, that's why I waited uh, for a while before I started the live stream. But we're glad that you're here and glad that you're joining us, and uh, your uh, every viewer counts. So thanks a lot. So we should be getting started here. Looks like you're having a lottery of some sort. And if you're watching, also don't forget to click the follow button above the uh, the video so you can get an email notification of when I go on a live stream. And uh, now that my health is feeling a little bit better and everything, I'm trying to come out and do more live streams. And I'll be live streaming either here or at KPFA stream. So you can follow either one of those. And uh, KPFA is a little collective project that we have of uh, people from uh, the radio station 94.1 KPFA here in the Bay Area, but you can uh, also go online and find them at kpfa.org. So these are people from all over Northern California. Not a lot of excitement here, of course. And there's a noticeable absence of police out here, of course. If this was a Black Lives Matter protest, you can best bet there'd be 500 cops out here waiting to beat the shit out of people. So, uh, you know, as you can see from the skin tone of the crowd, that there's not going to be a whole lot of cops out here today. And, you know, yours truly, you know, I've been shot at right in this very plaza by the police. Uh, so, you know... You know from my other live streams and everything that, I, you know, I've been put in danger in this plaza quite a few times by the Oakland Police Department. Right? Little old Lane Clark, right? Barely walk. At any rate, we should be getting started. Are you saving these? Uh, just to see by the steps here, that's all. Okay. This is one. Yeah, be patient here. We should be getting started. Kind of feel like I, I started the live stream a little bit too soon. And I'm sure you don't want to sit there and listen to me jaw about for hour after hour. I get tired of hearing my own self.
Lots and lots of people. Good morning. Aha. Now he finally got a speaker. Happy to see all of you. My name is Zenny Cortez. I'm a co-president of the California Nurses Association. We are all here to celebrate Medicare. 50 years of Medicare. Are we going to keep it? Yes. Are we going to improve it? Yes. Are we going to expand it? Medicare's birthday, what is not American as having apple pie? So, in the interest of time, we're going to do some early drawing for pies. So for those of you who have not put in your tickets, you will have an opportunity for the drawing later after the program. So, for now, we will be drawing like 10 tickets. And we want you to celebrate because nothing is more important than keeping Medicare for all. It is important to me, and I hope it is important as, all, as it is to all of you. So we're going to start. Take out your tickets. We will call the numbers. Okay, the first number is 078282. 078282. Okay, so do I have a winner? Sit down here. Okay, false alarm. So I'm going to call it one more time and count to 10. Oh, she is? Okay, good. Okay. All right, so she's going to pick up her pie after the program so she doesn't have to carry it. Okay? We will take her name down. Congratulations. Clip for my cameras zero, broken, so uh, seven, nine, three, doing my best out here to five, hold the camera still. Eight. Zero seven nine three five eight. Check your tickets. The pies are union made. Hey, American apple pie. Zero. Uh, yeah, Medicaid in Canada is definitely getting cut. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people here today. Zero seven eight zero four zero. At least a thousand plus in from all over Northern California. Eight zero four zero. A lot of unions, SEIU. I can see. ILWU, I'm sure, is here. One more time. Uh, zero seven. Alabama Labor eight zero Council. Four zero. So. Any winner? Lots and lots of union people out here. Going. Can going. Your, can your outside voice be any louder than it is? Yes, they can hear it. Yeah. Okay, going, going, gone. Next one. Zero seven nine two eight eight. Zero seven nine two eight eight.
She was just having a hard time coming through the crowd. So we'll give it to her. Okay, next winner. 078267. 078267. Okay, come on down. 078267. Okay. And one more. 078752. 078752. Emma, you really got to stop. Emma, you really got to stop. 078752. No one? Okay, it's gone. All right. The we'll pies are all good. Saludos a aquellos que hablan español. Tenemos servicios de traducción. Pueden ir a cobrar su, su radio para escuchar la traducción de todo lo que se va a presentar aquí. Diríjanse al lado de la lotería. Ahí estamos dando los micrófonos para, para poder escuchar la traducción. Beautiful day out here, as it is here in California most of the time. We could use a little rain, but we're gonna have a little music. Thank you very much. We are La Mixta Criolla, and on behalf of the band, I just want to say we are very pleased and honored to be part of this event. We support you, we support your cause, and our music hopefully will give you strength and inspiration to continue your struggle. We're with you. Power to the people. Ay, con el sabor criollo, cultura viva de nuestra tierra. Vengo con la mitad que te saluda, son de una prueba viva. Oye, que yo, oye, como suena, ya llegó la mitad que te saluda, son de una prueba. Ay, ya llegó la mitad con tu dos candela. Vengo con la mitad que te saluda, son de una prueba.
I thought we, we were worn and out, but uh, they want us to play another song with you. Do you like the music? Thank you so much. It's, it's really, really an honor to be part of something bigger than any one of us, any one of you. Um, and this music that we play from, uh, from the Caribbean, from Puerto Rico, different parts of the Caribbean has always been part of the struggle of the people. So our music is at your service and at the service of the people. Here we go.
gracias, la mixta criolla. Thank you. For those of you just joining us, we're here in Oakland, California with your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Show Tom some love. Yes, indeed. Would you all join me in wishing Medicare happy birthday? Repeat after me. Happy fucking birthday! Happy, happy fucking, fucking birthday! birthday. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of my father. I've lived 20 years longer than he had. He died when he was 53. And I knew at his deathbed that I had a mission. And that mission was to provide universal health care for everybody. From sperm to worm. We dropped the ball a little bit in Sacramento. We need to make this a burning issue for the next governor's race. If they're listening, we don't want to have lip service. We want the real thing. And there's no reason we can't have it. Medicare provided a, a building block for us. They said it wouldn't work. They said it would be too expensive. Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush wants to modify. Modify. It's called the voucher system. I wish I had his health benefits. I get a little lift right here. No, I'm not. No, it's it, being old, you know, if people lay a lot of trips on you, and I want to say I'm 73, and the other night I pulled an all-nighter. I didn't get up once to pee, and I think that's an accomplishment. They always tell you uh, you should have a bucket list when you get older. I call it a fuck it list. You want to live on the Serengeti with the gorilla family? Fuck it. You want to kick the Republican Party's ass? Yes! Yes! The city of Oakland has not been very Canada generous Democrats. to us today um, in time. So I'm going to try to move it. Uh, and we have some fabulous speakers and allies. And our first speaker is Mark Capool, Board of Directors, California Nurses Association. Insurance companies with health care. 
And Medicare for All program could provide genuine, comprehensive, and uniform benefits made possible by pooling all private and public funding together into one publicly run insurance plan. This would save on so many health care dollars that currently go to CEO salaries, advertising, you name it. Lean programs at my hospital. Medicare provides patients and Medicare provides patients to see any doctors and nurses they want. Medicare will truly guarantee coverage. Medicare is a, an American success story. Americans love success. Medicare has increased life expectancy and decreased poverty. We, all love, we also love level playing fields. Medicare for all would create a level playing field. This is the first step in making it possible for all of us to get the health care we need. Let's level the playing field. Let's make health care a human right. Let's protect, improve, and expand Medicare for another 50 years. Thank you. When I grow up, I want to be a head nurse. I just wanted to acknowledge a former colleague of mine who had a bill that increased the rates for Medicare, Nancy Skinner, former Assemblywoman at and I also want to connect the dots to something else. I, I know as seniors, a lot of us know about Prop 13, and Prop 13 has actually been harmful, particularly to uh, low-income people, and a lot of people have lost their homes uh, under the agit prop of Prop 13, keeping them in their homes. Well, that's bullshit. And so there's an organization today called Evolve, which is working towards a grassroots solution and reform of Prop 13. So give them a nice welcome. Our, uh, our next speaker is uh, someone I know from uh, San Francisco politics. She's kind of the diva asaluta of, of uh, senior uh, benefits and reform. She's on the Democratic Central Committee, which has taken a distinct, uh, a distinct attitude of the right lately. Yeah. And I so about Henny, she's one of the few people on that that keeps a moral compass and actually has moved some furniture. Uh, it's about a chair, I'll let her tell you. Henny Kelly. Hi there. How many of you are seniors? How many of you want to become seniors someday? All right, and this is for you. My name is Henny Kelly. I am vice president of the California Alliance for Retired Americans. And we are the largest progressive grassroots senior advocacy organization. We represent over 950,000 seniors, and we are growing through our 250 affiliated communities based affiliates. Such as foregoing necessary 
the Wizard of Oz one more time? <laughs> yes! The Emerald City oh, sorry, will have Universal. Yeah. Oh, Our next speaker is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guillermina Castellanos uh, and her translator. She's an organizer of the Labor Program and Women's Collective Executive Board at San Francisco Jobs with Justice. It does not, should not 
matter if you are documented or undocumented. We are all human beings, and this is a human right. It is not a privilege. It is a right that is deserving of all human beings. Necesitamos seguir luchando para mejorar los planes de salud. Sí se puede. We need to continue struggling to make sure that everyone has access to better and quality health care. Yes, we can. Debemos seguir luchando para ganar Medicare para todas, todos los inmigrantes, toda la comunidad. Gracias. We need to keep fighting to expand Medicare for all, all immigrants and all members of our community. Thank you. Okay, we got to do it. Si se puede. 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 Yes, we will, too, not just yes. Uh, our next speaker has really proven herself to be uh, not only strong-willed, but responsive to populist issues in her city of Richmond. Um, as an LGBT uh, person, she's put up with some very vicious homophobia. You know what homophobia is, don't you? The irrational fear that three fags will break into your house and redecorate it against your will. <laughs> you gotta have a sense of humor for the haters, because the haters can't take it. Here's a real, here's a real hero, uh, Jovenka Beckles, councilwoman.
things are going a little backwards. Uh, the, the, the rightward drift is privatizing more public functions, and we're depending more on the charity of the wealthy than on the society as a whole doing what's, what's necessary. So I, I just want to say really quickly, those of you know that DMC, Doctors Medical Center, was recently closed in Richmond, and, and, and how, what do you think about that? That's disgusting. It's disgusting because every community deserves a place to, uh, to, to go and, and get the health care that they need. So as a health care for all, Bill Boris says, health and justice for all. Health and justice for all. Health and justice for all. Thank you. If you have a chant sheet, please take a look at it. We're going to warm it up. So when Medicare is under attack, what do we do? When Medicare is under attack, what do we do? When Medicare is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When Medicare is under attack, what do we do? When Medicare is under attack, what do we do? Medicare, it's all right. What do we do? You know, I recently got married. I wish he felt that way. No, I said. No, and I did. I, I promised that I would be with him through sickness and through death. And without Medicare, without single payer, um, we would not have that. And uh, help me keep my marriage vows, will you? Let's extend Medicare. Let's have single payer. And, a lot of the reasons we've made progress is because of doctors and physicians. Our next speaker is Keon Mitchell, Physicians for National Health Program and the California Health Professional Student Association. Hi, thank you all for having me. I actually just got here about 30 seconds ago. So just in the nick of time, I guess. Happy birthday, Medicare. Dear Medicare, on July 30th, 1965, you were inked into law. You are much wiser and older than I am. You were surrounded by revolutionaries like the Voting Rights Act and the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. Your selflessness contributed to the desegregation of the South because hospitals who racially discriminated against their patients would not receive any federal funding granted to them in your name. You were a civil rights advocate lifting older Americans out of desperation when one in three adults over 65 years of age or older were in poverty. You are a legend like Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King, and the legend who will grace this mic in a few moments, Dolores Huerta. Woo! Woo! There we go. We are facing difficult times now. We have to tweet phrases like, Black Lives Matter as if we were transported back to the decade of your inception. And like the healthcare justice, our battle cry is loud and clear. Medicare, you deserve more. You deserve more than I can give you as a second year medical student. Sometimes I get so frustrated with the limitations of our healthcare system, it begins to make me sick. Almost as sick as the patients who frequent our student-run clinics because although they might have insurance, it pales in comparison to you, Medicare. You do so much for our elders, yet you are not allowed to help the rest of us who are incessantly thirsting for more. You have not been allowed to reach your full potential. You are ripe with the sagacity and tenacity to lift us from the depths of our desperation as present and future healthcare practitioners who want to make sure we are all accounted for, not just the ones who can afford to pay for their health insurance, not just the ones who attempt to navigate bronze, silver, gold, and platinum plans that fall into a hierarchical jigsaw puzzle that we call the healthcare system, but hold fast, Medicare. We are fighting for Medicare for all with and for you. Today we are with you, Medicare. And again on October 1st, students for our National Health Program with students all over the country will hold teach-ins, candlelight vigils, and marches to highlight the thousands of people who die each year because they do not have health insurance. So you see, Medicare, you may be older, wiser, and have just a bit more patient experience, 
but just know that we are the new revolutionaries standing on the shoulders of giants like you. Thank you for all you have done, and we will not stop until we reach true health for all through Medicare for all. Thank you. I said, doctor, doctor, I said, Mr. MD, that is the future, that is the future. Um, speaking of the future, and someone who has worked tirelessly over many decades, no, she ain't old, because she's ageless. A true champion, Dolores Huerta. to recommit ourselves to the struggle for social justice. And it was really interesting when uh, Medicare uh, was uh, passed, uh, Ronald Reagan came out and he said that this was a socialist plot, right? Yeah, uh, that, 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 those were his uh, famous words and uh, that they thought they should be defeated and gotten away with. Uh, so it's wonderful that we're all here today. I, like uh, many of you, I'm sure, I was uh, very, very uh, lucky uh, that I, we did have Medicare because uh, back in the year 2000, uh, after that uh, grueling electoral campaign, I had an aneurysm. Uh, my doctor bill was actually a quarter of a million dollars, 250,000. Uh, luckily, I survived, and I'm still here uh, to be able to keep the, fight, the good fight going, right? The good fight going. And uh, but I think one of the things, of course, uh, you know, when they talk about immigrants not being covered, they forget that when people have to go to the emergency room, I'm sorry, but that is a much bigger expense, you know? And it doesn't make any sense that, of course, that immigrants uh, who are undocumented, they should be covered uh, with our health care systems. And so we have to keep fighting for that, absolutely. And the other thing, too, is that, you know, we're coming up uh, uh, for elections now in 2016, and we've got to make sure that all the politicians that want our support, that we get them to commit to single payer, that we get them to commit to help for all. Because they're going to come with all of these promises, and all of a sudden they get an office. And also, by the way, we mustn't forget that we've got to keep the fight for working people so that they can keep their pensions for the money that they left on the table. And this is another big fight. You know, they, they want the retirement money, uh, all of these employers and, and government officials, and this is money that working people left on the table so when they got older, uh, they would have something to live on. And uh, this is another big fight that we have. And also to just respect labor, period. We have to remind people. We have to remind people that had it not been for labor unions, we would not have a minimum wage. We would not have unemployment insurance. We would not have Social Security. We would not have safety standards. We would not have an eight-hour day. We would not have public education. Okay, let's remind them. Let's remind them and thank every single politician that gets elected uh, that they have to commit, that they will have to commit, that they will support labor, that they will, will help us erase income inequality and really stand up for single payer and the things that we are working for. We have to keep, you know, we have to hold their feet to the fire even if they are our friends, okay? Because sometimes they forget. We have to stay on top of them to do that. And I'm, I'm glad it was mentioned earlier, but the previous speaker, that you know, Medicare actually helped desegregate uh, the South and many of the places where African Americans and other people of color uh, could not get any kind of medical service. So Medicare has had a great history of what it, what it has done uh, for the good of our country, but we know that there's still a lot of work to do and we're gonna keep working to make, make it strong. And, and again, who's gonna make it happen? We, the people here, we are the ones that are gonna make it. So I'm gonna ask you, and I know you all know the right answer, I'm going to say, who's got the power? We have the power. What kind of power? People power. I'm going to ask the question again, but this time I want the answer to be voting power. Okay. What kind of power? Voting power. Because we've got a lot of work today to do to make sure that every single person in our unions, every, that not only them, but that their families and their neighbors and everybody gets out to vote so we can elect the right kind of people, people like Tom Amiano, 
like Benny Yi, the people that are here with us today, make sure that those are the kind of people that are going to get elected, people that are going to fight, fight and work for us and for labor and for immigrants and everybody else, and of course, we're single payer. So I'm going to ask the question again. Let's shout it really, really loud, but this time we're going to say what kind of power? Voting power. Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? Kind of power? Voting power. All right, so let's say a big old Libra from Medicare. I'm going to say, Que viva Medicare, shot viva. Que viva Medicare. Viva. Que viva Medicaid. Viva. Que viva the labor unions. Viva. Que viva los emigrantes. Viva. All right, can we go out there and keep on working and make it happen? I like the people, what do we say? Si se puede. Let's do it, everybody, together. Si se A true inspiration. And you know if we connect the dots and looking at health care and all the immigrant bashing that's going on, you know how important this is and how important it is to work uh, in coalition with the immigrant community so that our undocumented people will be covered. In San Francisco, we have something I sponsored called the Healthy San Francisco Program. And Yay. it means even if you are undocumented, you get covered and it's access. Yay. Let's, see if, let's see if we can get Oakland to do it as well. You know, there used to be a time in San Francisco, if you asked somebody for their papers, they would give you zigzags or rolling papers. <laughs> and there's a beauty to that. And speaking of that, you know, in Sacramento, it's kind of a desolate place when you're looking for people who have progressive ideas and the, and the wherewithal to pursue them. And our next speaker worked with me on many, many progressive issues in Sacramento. Uh, the legalization of marijuana, yes, we cannabis. Uh, yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like you to introduce one of the champions of social justice in Sacramento, uh, State Controller Betty Yee. Thank you, Todd. Good afternoon, everyone. So, I don't know how you feel about this whole fight that we're in, but I just got to tell you, Medicare is not the problem. Medicare has been a solution for the last 50 years. And what are we fighting for? We're fighting to preserve it. And yes, health care costs are going up because, frankly, there are many more of us who are baby boomers. They're going to rely on Medicare. But how about we take on those who are naysayers, those who want to privatize Medicare, those who want to repeal it, those who want to make it a voucher program, and let's get on with the business of bringing health care costs down, like our insurance commissioner Dave Jones is working on every single day. We have, we have the greatest opportunity here in California to move ahead, to convince Congress in Washington that it's very cost effective to have health care for all because we have health care for all and single payer potentially in Medicare. So for all of you who are hitting the streets on this and we're not going to give up the fight and frankly Dolores Huerta has taught us all how to organize around this, I just say to you, happy birthday Medicare and frankly we're going to be here and celebrate your 100th birthday Medicare and to say we have got to get Medicare for all on the books. We've got to get single payer because as your state controller, I will tell you, it is 3% of administrative costs for a health care program. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good. Compared to 40% of administrative costs for private health insurance. So the fight ought to be about bringing health care costs down. Insurance companies, Listen to Dave Jones, we don't want to be paying your 40% administrative costs. Pharmaceutical companies, we don't want you to keep jacking up drug prices so that people have to make a choice between drugs and food on the table. And expensive medical procedures that aren't going to do anything for us when we know what we have to do for our own bodies, our own lives, our families. So what I'm going to just say to you is let's recommit on this 50th birthday of Medicare. But more importantly, let's continue the fight because we can get there. Medicare for all, 
single-payer health system. We're saving money. Medicare is not the problem. It's been a great solution for hundreds of millions of Americans. We got an election coming up in just a little over a year, and we're going to let everyone know, everyone know who turns out, that the person we're going to put in the White House is going to fight for us. It's going to fight for us. And they're going to fight for us because they are going to stand up. And they're going to stand up to the pharmaceutical industry, stand up to the insurance companies, and stand up to those who are putting roadblocks in our way when we can't declare that health care is a human right. But we're all here because we know that. All of the civil rights struggles led by wonderful figures like Dolores Huerta, recent struggles like health care for healthy San Francisco led by Tom Amiano, all of these were possible because we organized. And we're not going to stop this fight because not only is it about voting rights, it is about human rights at the end of the day. And we'll get it done right here in California. We'll show the rest of the nation. We will stand up to the insurance companies. We will stand up to the pharmaceutical companies. And let's get on with the business of expanding Medicare because this is the right thing to do. Thank you all very much. That's right. No more take two aspirins and call me in the morning. No more turn your head and cough. Or, you know, in Sacramento, I worked with uh, our next speaker, and uh, he was uh, uh, extremely helpful on, on many, many issues that are important to us. He was chair of the health committee when I got there, and that is a large, cumbersome, conflicted committee. And uh, he course. brought unity, and he brought good sense to it. One of my favorite uh, meetings with him was when the uh, insurance pigs, I mean the insurance companies, <coughs> were touting their uh, their exclusion of many, many people and pre-existing condition. He looked at the guy in his chair of this very prestigious committee and said, Sir, have you no decency? And I cheered that. And here is someone who has a lot of decency, our insurance commissioner, Dave Jones. Thank you, Tom Amiano. How about a round of applause for Tom Amiano? What a calorie. California's extraordinary progressive leaders. And how about a round of applause for Betty Yee, our state controller? And Dolores Huerta, who's been fighting the fight for progressive causes for decades in California. And all the other speakers and all of you have come out today for this incredibly important cause to fight for Medicare. Now imagine it's 50 years ago, it's 1966, and we're all seniors. Imagine that. In 1966, one half of this crowd of seniors was without any health insurance coverage whatsoever. So starting from this line here, all of you were expendable. Imagine that world. But now, because we have Medicare, all of our seniors have access to health care, they're living longer lives, they're living decent lives, and we are affording them the opportunity to address each and every health care issue they have. That's something worth fighting for, isn't it? Now imagine as well, it's 1966, we're all seniors. About a quarter of you wouldn't even be here. Why? Because of life expectancy. Medicare has helped to increase life expectancy between five to eight years for our seniors. Imagine that. More seniors living longer, being able to devote time to their families, to their communities, making a great difference. Who could be against that? You named it. Insurance companies and conservatives who want to deny people basic decency and dignity. Now, I'm one of the officials in California that's been charged with implementation of the Affordable Care Act. And the Affordable Care Act has a lot of good in it. But it doesn't go far enough. We have reduced by half the number of uninsured. But that still means we have 3 million uninsured people in California. And that simply doesn't mean we're going far enough. Now, the other thing the Affordable Care Act doesn't do is constrain out-of-pocket costs sufficiently. Right now, we're seeing health plans that have thousands and thousands of dollars of deductible co-payment and cost sharing, and it's only going to get worse. Great. We're seeing excessive rates charged time and time again, and an inability to rein in, in California, those excessive rates. 
we're seeing essential health benefits denied things like wheelchairs. Can you imagine that? Health insurance without wheelchairs, but under the Affordable Care Act in California, the essential health benefits do not include wheelchairs. They don't include hearing aids. They don't include prosthetic devices for people that have lost arms and legs. The list goes on and on. It does not go far enough. What we need to do is to take that additional step and go all the way to Medicare for all. Now you've heard all the arguments for it. Medicare has provided health care for literally millions of our seniors. Medicaid for tens of millions of the poor. We need to take profits out of this equation. Why do you think all these companies are running after each other to buy each other? Because of the money. Health care decisions should not be based on profits. They should be based on what's right for human beings. Now, I want to make sure that the folks up in these buildings up here can hear us in a moment. In fact, I want to make sure that the folks back in Sacramento can hear us in a moment. In fact, I want to really make sure that the folks in Washington, D.C. can hear us in a moment. We hope we do that? Yeah. All right. I'm going to say Medicare, and you're going to say for all. And we're going to make sure they hear us in Sacramento, in Washington, D.C., and throughout this great land, because we're not going to give up this fight until we have Medicare for all, until health care is a basic human right that all Americans and other people living in this great country can have access to. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Medicare. For all. Medicare. For all. Medicare. For all. Thank you very, very much. Okay, I know that sun is beating down. I got a few announcements for you. Uh, for those of you who tweet, you know who you are. We have some signs uh, around the crowd to help out with messages. We're going to do a Twitter storm. Everyone from around the country is sending. By the way, there are a number of other rallies like this throughout the country. I believe the one in D.C., the main speaker is... Bernie! Burning Man Saunders! So, if you're going to tweet, tweet this. At Oakland Medicare 50 Rally, protect, improve, expand, hashtag Medicare for all. And if you have a, want to take a selfie, please do it. Just keep it clean. And for those of you not on Twitter, get out your quills and no. Get out your cell phone and make a call to the president. I know he's sitting right by the phone. Michelle is anxious to talk to you and to Congress to make your voice heard. Do it right now to demand that they protect, improve, and expand Medicare. President Obama's number is, I feel like fucking Donald Trump giving out the guy's number. 202-456-1414. 202-456-1414. Operators are waiting. Members of Congress, if they're there and awake, 800-826-3688. 800-826-3688. So I hope you have the energy, and I know I do, so we're going to leave this place and go to a better place. <laughs> we're going to leave this place and march uh, down the street, and there's going to be a bus for people who feel that they can't uh, make it uh, uh, mobility-wise. Yeah, and I'd like to bring on uh, Josie Camacho, who has worked very hard. In fact, can we thank everybody who put this together, because it's quite an effort. And here is Josie. Brothers and sisters, are you ready to stand up for health care? I want you all to stand up for health care. I am Josie Camacho, Secretary Treasurer of the Alameda Labor Council. We are going to get ready to march. And I want to say that labor working families stands with every single person who deserves the right to human health care without the high cost. Are you with me? Yes. So I want to acknowledge really quickly UA, Local 21, the operators are here, SEIU, our teachers are here, CFA, OEA, PFT, Forum, retirees, AFSCME, and many, many other unions and 
and I forget, I know you'll come up to me, but my point is this. We have got to stay together, come together, march together to the federal building, which we're going to do right now. Those of you who are unable to walk, please go over to this way on 14th yeah, Street. That's me and on the other side I'm of that building, the bus, there will be buses there. So I will end the, Those the live of stream you, like you when and the many speakers of, are finished. Like myself and many of you, we're going to come over here and we're going to converge and follow the ILWU drill team. Are you with here. me? So I want people to start going over that way. Thank March you, monitors will direct us over to the federal building because this is a federal program. That is our next right, stop. Well, we're not going to be so joining the march. We're yeah. coming up a pretty lane here. But... As you're marching, what do we want? When do we want well, that's pretty much it for today. This is Freeman Sullivan signing off. Have a beautiful day, folks.